going to be collecting samples. But, well, hello everyone again and uh, from all over the world and uh, welcome, welcome this evening to our special Create and Learn uh, conference with, uh, with Eric. And uh, we'll give you some introductions here. I'm Bruce and uh, I'm a teacher with Create and Learn. I've written some books about uh, NASA and people who work there. And um, I'm with my co-host Francis. Um, and uh, she's a student and she enjoys coding and biology and hanging out with her friends. So really happy to, to be here with you this evening. Welcome again. So I'll give you some background about Create and Learn. It offers over 25 courses on coding, AI, robotics, games, data science, and more. And uh, all the curricula is created by Google experts and Stanford, MIT, and Harvard graduates. And it's the highest rated five-star kids computer science program on Facebook. We're going to watch a, a short video about Create and Learn. So here we go. Thank you, Bruce. For, thank you, Bruce. Um, I'm really excited to be here uh, today with, with everybody. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about JPL, um, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and, and uh, that's based in, oh, let me see, I'm trying to get my, there you go. Um, the Jet, there's a picture here, actually, of JPL. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a campus, almost, a, almost like a school campus, like a university. And and it's it's uh it's about six thousand uh, uh, employees that work there, and we do we do more than just Mars missions. And and I'm gonna get to a video in a second. Uh, but you know, if we have any questions, um, you know, go ahead and, and put them in the chat. And 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 Bruce, please please uh, you know, shout them out there if 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 you need to, and I can I can try to answer as we go along. Um, and so. Uh, so anyway, so, so uh, wanted to introduce a little bit about myself. What I do, um, I'm currently the manager for the uh, for the uh, on the Mars sample return uh, lander, where I'm going to develop a motor controller. So this is actually you know in line with what what some of the 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 curriculum at, at Create and Learn. We're going to be designing a motor controller to allow us to actually uh, autonomous autonomously um, actuate. And and fly the rover as it, or fly the lander as it's, as it's through EDL, and we're going to be able to use rockets, uh, rocket engines to slow us down and, and eventually put us down uh, safely on the ground on Mars. Um, so we're developing a brand new motor controller with uh, software and a and a brand new computer for, for this mission. So um, my previous task before this was working on the. Uh, 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 Mar uh, Mars 2020, which is uh, the Perseverance rover. And that rover was the one that uh, is, is currently now collecting samples uh, and, and, and getting them stored uh, for, for, the, for my next program, right? Which is to go pick them up and, and, and eventually bring them back. So, um, so that's, that's, that's a little bit about me. Um, let's see, I'm trying to get through the chat a little bit. And so, okay, so here, let me, let me um, jump forward here. So as I said, right, we're actually, uh, we're actually one of NASA's uh, arms, right? Um, so NASA has 10 centers across, across the country, across the U.S., and we are one of the centers. Um, uh, I'm going to say that we are probably the coolest center of, of all the NASA centers because we actually do get to do a lot more uh, design and development of, of spacecraft. Um, at JPL, so that, that's the cool part. Um, Caltech is actually the 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 organization, the the school that actually manages us, right? So, so I kind of have two bosses, both NASA and Caltech, and uh, but it works out really good for us, and and uh, you know we're we're always excited to to do uh, new and exciting uh, exciting work. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through next. I'm gonna play a video. It's gonna show you a lot of different missions over the past about 15 years or so. Um, and I'm going to ask you after after the video. I'm going to I want to ask, can you guys tell me what kind of missions, what kind of things are we looking for with these missions? And you'll see it; it'll be scattered throughout. So I want to I want to understand, you know, how much we do. I want you guys to understand we don't just do Mars missions; we do a lot of other things, right? So 
Uh, we're gonna hit the video next. fantastic demonstration of what our nation and our agency can do. I could only think of the words of Teddy Roosevelt as I was sitting there. It is far better to dare mighty things even though we might fail than to stay in a twilight that knows neither victory nor defeat. And the team brought us victory. I just want to call and say congratulations to the entire Mars Science Laboratory team and really all of JPL. You guys should be remarkably proud. And this is the kind of thing that inspires us across the country.
Is that this stock? Yeah, looks like it's paused. <laughs> RC helicopters before, they're everywhere. They're a ton of fun. But we were thinking here at JPL, could we fly one of these on Mars? We're gonna talk about that on this episode of Crazy Engineering. So why would we wanna put a helicopter on Mars? If I'm the rover right now, I can't really see over the terrain behind me. But if I had a helicopter with a camera on it, all of a sudden, I can see a whole lot more. If our rover was equipped with its very own helicopter that could see over the tall objects in front of us, it would allow us to make decisions much more efficiently on which way to command the rover. You might think it's actually easier to fly one of these helicopters on Mars because it's actually three-eighths the gravity we have here on Earth, but it's a hundred times less atmosphere. The way any of these helicopters work is the rotor blades spin up and they produce lift because of the density of the atmosphere. So once you lose that density, you've got to spin even faster or get bigger rotor blades or get lighter. How are we going to solve that problem if we go to Mars? Let's go talk to an expert and see if we can figure this out. All right, guys, I think we found our expert. This is Bob. Bob, can you tell us where we are right now? We're in one of our robotics labs here at JPL, where we have a full-scale mock-up of one of the Mars helicopters we've been working on. What are the challenges that you have to overcome in order to produce lift on the surface? Right, so there's a challenge of the very low density of the atmosphere. There's the challenge of keeping the whole mass of the system small so that we don't overwhelm the lift capability of the system. It has to be autonomous in terms of being able to fly and maintain stable flight. And then this system has to repeatedly take off and land on natural rocky terrain that you see out here. And then the other one is that it has to survive the harsh environment of Mars. So we're early in the design stages of this thing. What kind of testing, what kind of results have you seen so far? So over the course of the last year, we've done a number of tests in our 25 foot vacuum chamber using scale models where we pump down to Mars densities, demonstrating lift of these kinds of blades. So how fast do the blades have to spin to produce lift? They have to spin at about 2400 RPM to provide lift. Could you tell us a little bit about this helicopter's capabilities when it's on Mars? Right, so the system is designed to fly for two to three minutes every day. There's a solar panel on the top, and that provides us enough energy for that short flight, as well as to keep us warm through the night. So in those two to three minutes, we expect to have daily flights of about a half a kilometer or so. What are the next steps? How do we get this thing ready for a future rover mission? Because this thing is gonna take off every day and land every day. We wanna make sure we have a bulletproof landing system. And landing is the riskiest part of any mission. UDL has seven minutes of terror. We'll have seven seconds of terror every day. Bob, thanks a lot for teaching us about the helicopter. I hope you guys out there had as much fun as we did learning about this and check back soon for some more crazy engineering. All right, so I wanted to pause it right there. Crazy engineering, because that I feel is something that we're always doing at JPL. So can who tell, can anybody tell me who's, uh, what are some of the types of missions that, that we do at JPL? Maybe put it in the chat. Rockets, rovers, launch sky rockets from Ethan. Mars missions, Curiosity, sea missions, rovers, helicopters, go to the moon, space, Cassini, lots of things, exploring, looking for foreign life, exploring outer space, Titan missions, 
perseverance, making drones, and, and so on. <laughs> Lots yeah, of great and, answers. And these are great answers, but I also wanted to point out that there's actually a lot of Earth missions, too, that we actually have a lot of satellites that are studying uh, uh, moisture content in the soil. We understand the Earth. As much as we we like to explore outside of the Earth, right, and 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 go to uh, deep space for you know for Vesta for for Dawn, for instance, or or you know see the the Encel see, see the uh, the moons of Enceladus, right, and, and watch the geysers and and go to different you know deep space or Mars, you know land on Mars and do exploration. There, we also do a ton of of exploration or uh, understanding. Of our own earth right so that's actually I, I wanted to make sure that that everybody understood that that it's not only you know that the you know the deep space stuff we also do a lot of things near near earth to help better understand what you know where we're coming from what how things are are um, how the earth is evolving over time right so um, Eric, um, what, sorry yeah. a question came through from um i think it was from does or dust he says uh, where is jpl Oh yeah, so JPL's uh, in uh, Southern California and uh, and uh, in 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 the U.S. Right? I realize this is now a, a international uh, uh, classroom that we're talking to. So, uh, so in the U.S. and in, in California, in Southern California, there's uh, um, they call it the San Gabriel Mountains. There's we're, we're nestled just just under there and and uh, uh, home of uh, six thousand uh, you know kind of crazy engineers that that keep keep doing this work. Another one, quick one about JPL, is it restri a restricted uh, area to the public? No, so actually we are we are a federally funded research and development. Um, so we are, you know, NASA, you know, and the federal government does fund us. But and, and as a result of that, we actually have to uh, be open with, with what we're doing there. So um, there are tours that are available, not so much now with COVID, right? Eventually that'll go away. Um, but, but the, uh, but yes, we do have tours and, and, um, once a year we host a, an, what we call an open house and the open house is, is, is a time for, uh, anybody in the public to come in and they're able to, uh, see what we're working on and we'll have displays out. Engineers will be out there talking and scientists will all be talking about the work that they're doing. And, and it's a, it's usually a really good time. It's, it's done over two days and, and it's always, a uh, it's always it's always a lot of fun. There are a lot of questions um, coming just about what you do during your day. What's a typical day like? But we should probably let you <laughs> go carry on a little bit with your presentation. All right. Well, right? actually, I think I can answer some of that on 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 what we what I did on the previous project for um, on on perseverance. I'm going to skip forward here. Oops. So. The Mars 2020 sample caching subsystem, right? This was a, um, this is what, what, and the reason why we went to, to Mars this last time was perseverance, right? This entire subsystem in the front here, it was called the sample caching system. This is a, this is a, 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 a robot, essentially a geologist that actually is, is going out to Mars We'll use a bunch of different sensors and 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 uh, science instruments to determine which samples they want to collect, and then we would actually go ahead and and we designed a, a robotic arm. So we have a robotic arm, a lot like uh, the arm that you have, right? You have a shoulder, right? You have a shoulder, an elbow, and a wrist, um, and then at the end of the arm, we actually have a, a nearly 100 pound uh, or 40, you know, 45 kilogram uh, uh, drill that allowed us to actually go in and, and take core samples. And then inside the belly of the rover, we actually, we have a way to actually put, uh, you know, uh, we have uh, empty tubes that we'll use to then fill with, with uh, samples and then put those back in, you know, uh, and then store them. And, and eventually we drop them off for a, a future mission to pick them up. So, um, so my, my day to day was, I was actually one of the managers designing this, this system. And we were designing, you know, everything. And, and I had to, part of my job was to make sure that this entire system was actually um, going to work as, as intended. So one, one, of the, one of the jobs that I had to do was actually design a, a test facility and test fixture to allow us to test in Martian atmosphere, uh, Martian temperatures, and, and, and get, us, get us working there. Um, so, you know, part of my day was, a lot of my day actually was spending working on 
working on this uh, on this part of the rover. Um, this is just a couple other views of, of, of what you might see, right? So this is a, uh, uh, a docking ring that we use to actually pass uh, bits and samples back and forth into the, into the rover. Um, and then we have, these were all the sample tube storage area on the side there. This is looking now from, this is looking underneath from the bottom. So you can actually see all these. These are all tubes that would eventually get filled with, with uh, Martian rocks and soil. Um, and then, and then uh, uh, various processing stations and, and, and things that we're working on over here. So we're gonna go. And so this is again, just kind of showing you a, a more detailed view of the drill. Um, so the drill, uh, you know, is, is primarily, this is the drill housing. Um, the drill is inside. It was, it's a percussion drill, so it's actually me it's meant to hammer and, and go into rocks. And this is kind of what these, these are what the bits look like. They're hollow inside because that's where we got to collect samples. Um, we put the tubes in there, and and the, the sample actually fills the tube. And then we use a tube to break it away from the rock that it's attached to, and then we'll ingest it into into the rover. Um, so we're gonna go forward again. And then I'm going to show you a, a, a little animation of what it's like to drill and sample on, on Mars. And we'll, we'll have some more, we'll have some time for some more uh, questions after. So ju just so you're aware, there's, uh, there's no sound on this one. I think. Oh, there it is. So what, what are we what are we seeing here, uh, Eric? So yeah, so right now with, with the rover, the rover has identified a, a, a target location to go take a sample. So it deployed the robotic arm to, to, to go take that sample. So what you've seen there is it actually went in and drilled. It's, it has a sample that it's collected inside the drill bit. Now it's gonna go drop off the drill and see that that drill bit just got dropped off with the sample tube in the inside of it with with sample inside. So what's going to happen next is that you'll see the sample handling arm here, pull the sample out, and then it's going to go and process it. It's going to go take some uh, uh, volume estimation with the probe that we have in there, and then it's going to move over and take take over some. Uh, yeah, so there you go. Measure volume. It will seal the sample tube. And then we'll take images of each of these steps, right? So that way we have sort of a record as to what's going on. The, the, the idea here is that this has to all happen without um, people in the loop. So what we call autonomous, right? It has to be done autonomously um, because we, we can't spend the time trying to uh, uh, joystick it from the ground. The rover has to be able to be capable to do this work on its own. So that's that's one of the that that's essentially the the sampling that happens and it has to happen, you know. And, and there's there's a lot more to it. Obviously, this is a a, a kind of a, a short demo or a short little video of it, right? But the idea is um, the the scientists are going to decide where they want to go, and they actually have to tell us a specific point on the ground that they would use to actually go collect those samples, and and so that's um to, that's that's where a lot of this you know essentially work has to happen all this autonomy has to get built in software has to know exactly where the rover's at how is it how is this relation to the you know to what's in front of it by using the vision system um deploy the arm and 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 do all the work eric a couple of questions a good good ones there are many good questions are coming in keep them coming guys um but two that, that stood out how did they uh, decide where to drill? And the second part, how did they get the samples? Or how will they get the samples back to Earth? Okay, so first, they, there's, a, there's a, a lot of science instruments that are actually, uh, uh, actually, I'm, I'm gonna go forward one uh, real quick, just to see. 
Um, so I'm gonna. Uh, so there's there's actually a lot of science. There's ten science instruments on on perseverance. Those science instruments are used to help understand what the uh, chemistry, what's the composition of the rocks around it. And so the scientists will actually take a lot of data, review that data, and then decide, oh, I, I want to see more about this rock. So we have one of our um, bits that we take with us. It's called an abrading bit. It actually, it's used to scrape off like the top layer of the rock, and then we can go and, and examine it much closer. That tells us, okay, whether or not we want to, to decide to take a sample if the scientists all agree, we, they say, hey, we want a, a sample from that rock. They, they, they tell us uh, basically on a picture, I want to get that sample there. And then our robotic arm will, will go and, and figure out how to get there. It'll, it'll plan the move. It'll take the sample out of the ground and then, and then store it on the rover. And then how do we get it back? Well, we're actually just starting to work on that now. Um, we, are, we are working on a design to, to bring it back, but at a high level. The, the, the samples will get onto a, uh, what they call an orbiting sample. It's, it's kind of like a big um, sphere that's gonna hold it. Um, it'll go into a, a, a rocket, uh, what we call the Mars Ascent Vehicle, and we'll do a remote launch from Mars. We'll launch that rocket, and then we will eject out the, uh, the sample, and a, a, uh, an orbiter will come in and kind of pick it up from uh, orbit and uh, orbit around Mars, and then that that will turn around and come back and and drop the sample off. I think we're actually going to drop it off in uh, Utah, from what I understand. There's a desert in Utah that we're we're planning on and shooting the the samples to and 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 pick them up from there. That's exciting. And originally, the 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 site to do the collection, the Jezero Crater. Um, what's the significance of that uh, particular place, Eric? So yeah, I'm sure there's a lot more detail in there, but but the way I understood it is that this was a, a delta uh, where water once uh, uh, has, has flown, you know, was flowing and, 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 you know, you have plenty of water kind of flowing into this area. And, um, and for everything that we know, right, um, where there's water, there's potential for life. So we're exploring those areas to get samples out of there to see if there's any microbial life um, remaining in, in any of those rock samples that we take. The, uh, I just saw one of the, the uh, messages, right? How big is the rover, right? The, the rover's um, about the size of a, of a small SUV. It weighs about 2,000 uh, pounds, uh, about one ton. Okay, yeah, we'd like to ask everyone, please, uh, to not draw on the screen. Um, we appreciate your creativity, but it is distracting for the other participants. Thanks, everyone, for, for not drawing. All right. So um, I, I think we wanted to maybe um, move into uh, some of the other activities, right? Or, uh, there are more questions. I'm, I'm happy to answer some more questions. Yeah, absolutely. So there are several. Um, let's, let's go back here. There was there was a great one about um, are there um, are there missions that are not autonomous something of the, the the autonomous nature of perseverance so can you talk about that yeah a little most, bit, please? yeah mo a, a lot of our missions all have some level of autonomy um, the reason why um, is because we have to in order to so I, I know one of the chats I think I wrote that you know we get a ton of data every day from um, or I should say, you know, mega terabytes worth of data probably every day from from all the various missions that are that are running around, frankly, the universe, right? From as far out as as uh, um, Voyager, right, um, all, all the way to something that's near the Earth, and all this data actually comes to our our center, our data center, and and we have to process it. Now, the reason why I say that we have autonomy in a lot of our our spacecraft. Is, is frankly because, you know, we cannot watch them every single minute of every single day. So we have to build in, you know, that it needs to know what it has to do. So it has, if, it, if it's flying, you know, let's say it, it, it's flying around Mars, right? It, it knows what it's supposed to be doing and taking images, storing the data, sending over data packets. And, and we also have to share 
the deep space network that actually allows us to receive this information from Mars, from, from anywhere else, um, you know, uh, that, that, that we have a spacecraft flying. So we have to be able to um, share the deep space network to actually get data back. And then, and then if, uh, you know, so if something happens, right, uh, locally at the spacecraft level, it's able to go ahead and, and um, uh, you know, uh, uh, shoot, was it, well, no, well, I lost my train of thought here. Um, uh, it's supposed to save itself, right? So like, let's say uh, there was something that, that uh, it was supposed to do and, and something went wrong, right? Well, if something goes wrong, the spacecraft knows, okay, I'm gonna turn off maybe an instrument or maybe a, 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 a payload, I'm going to radio home and say, hey, there's a problem here, but I'm in the safe mode. Um, please tell me when to start up again, right? So, so that, that kind of work happens a lot, right? So, so that's why we have this autonomy built into, the, uh, uh, into, our, into our systems. Awesome. Maybe a couple more questions, if that's okay, before we yeah. do the, the interactive activity. Is yes, that okay? Absolutely. Um, um, one question was, uh, how long does it take to, to build a rover? And uh, what kind of education is necessary to be able to um, work in a job like yours? Well, so uh, let me start with the education uh, part first, right? So from, from an education point of view, right, we look for all, all types of educations, all types of engineers uh, and scientists are, are, are what we're looking for in, in, on Mars, uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> to work at JPL. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have uh, from chemical engineers, physicists, mathematicians, you know, electrical engineer, I'm an electrical engineer, mechanical, computer science, um, you know, you name it. I'm sure we, we have somebody there uh, doing that work. And, and, um, and so that's a type of education is, is really, it's, it's whatever makes you happy as far as what, what technical area you wanna, you wanna focus in on. Um, and, and what was, sorry, you had the education and what was the yeah. other? Yeah, uh, well, how long does it take Oh, that's right. Yeah, the, yeah. And so that I was going to say that that's a that's that that question varies. Um, that depending on for a Mars rover mission, right? Some sometimes we are working. Depends on how new the design is. It could be up to ten years for us to design from really from paper, right? From just a piece of paper all the way to a a like an actual spacecraft that's flying and operating. It could be about 10 years because sometimes we, we have to start working. Usually we start working at very high level requirements and then we start making the, the tweaks as we go along. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. So you've got a pretty neat uh, 3D model. Um, yeah. So let, me, to show us. let me show that. I'm going to do that presentation mode. So I'm not sharing right now, right? Correct, Bruce? Yeah. Yeah, and we can uh, share the link too, I guess. In, in yeah, the there, there was a yeah, there was a link that you guys were able, hopefully, are able to download. Which one yeah, do you exactly. want me to share? The longer one or the uh... the three D rover one? Okay, the three D yeah, model. For, yeah, the three D model. Yeah, and and I'm gonna we'll, we'll kind of do a quick demo on on what we're what you can see. Okay, you guys are able to see my my video, okay, or my screen? Yeah, we can. So right. everyone, you've you've received the link of, of what Eric is looking at right now. So um, feel free to to open that open that up, and Eric is going to go through the different parts of the rover. Right. So I'm going to kind of show you. So this allows you to so you'll be able to download this and 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 take a look and kind of spin it around and see what it's what it's all about. Now, one of the things I wanted to put on here for you guys is, is the, the first thing here, which is, so this is the rover, right? This is a, 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 a powered by a, a, a nuclear source, a RTG, radioisotope thermoelectric generator. So there's no solar panels. It, it, uh, the RTG sits on the back here and it, it provides, as the, as the heat um, from that thermal or nuclear source starts to, uh, uh, dissipate as, as it as it heats up. We take that heat and we convert it um, through thermoelectrics to to battery current, and we charge up batteries that, that sit inside the, the rover. Now, 
you guys saw we had a helicopter that we were talking about. Well, we actually have a helicopter on Mars, and the, and the Mars helicopter actually flew on the bottom of this rover. It was actually attached here and, and, and got dropped off once we were on, on, the on, on the ground on Mars. Now, the other thing is you may, we saw the uh, sample caching system where that small robotic arm inside the belly of the rover, that actually fits in this, in this cavity here and, and does a bunch of work. You can kind of see the outline of the tubes there. Uh, we are, uh, you know, a, a, a six-wheeled uh, 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 rover, right, to, to drive us around. Um, we have a, uh, uh, a robotic arm, which is, which is here, and this is the, uh, it, we call it a, a, a five-degree of freedom robotic arm. So it has, you know, it'll, it'll rotate a shoulder, similar like you, your elbow, uh, your wrist, and then we actually have an, another a turret we call here to actually uh, rotate around. Um, so this kind of this kind of covers your wrist motions that you know like a twisting and, and a bending. Um, and then you have the drill in front with with a with a few of the science instruments attached to the to the outside here, right? We have uh, uh, some imagers here on, on on these instruments here, some some cameras that we use for some close up uh, 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 science experiments. Um, and then we have an antenna. This is one of our antennas to talk directly to Earth. This one talks to orbiters that are going across Mars. These are the uh, high, high data rates. Um, we have actually, one thing that's pretty cool is actually this thing shoots a laser. And that's one of our science instruments it actually shoots a laser at, 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 uh, at rocks and, and then measures the, the content of the rock. Um, these are some wind sensors that we have, or some weather stations that we have on, on, the, at the, on the rover. So we're constantly monitoring the weather up there. Uh, and then we actually, let's see it here. Ah, there it is. We have, um, we have one of our, our instruments, MOXIE, that, that actually takes the, the air on Mars and converts it to oxygen. So that way, a future mission, like for astronauts, they can actually go and, and, and be able to uh, you know, generate their own oxygen to breathe. Um, and so one, one thing I wanted, maybe I, I hope I, I stalled long enough to have you guys download this and, and be able to work on it, but I wanted you guys to point out to me or maybe, or maybe tell me how many motors do we have for, for driving? Um, so not only, you know, driving, so, so think about what, what would you do to drive? You, you gotta, you know, drive forward, backwards, you know, turn right, turn left. So can you guys maybe go um, through and, and tell me Eva, how, how Eva many says, motors? Have? Sorry, Eric, Eva says eight. I think people are still looking at that. How many motors? Yeah, okay, so eight, yeah, eight, eight is not the right number. Five but, from land. No, oh, well, look, we have six wheels. 16. So it's got to be at least six, right? Well, let's give people a little time to count. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then we'll yeah, really try to announce it. Absolutely. Maybe in the meantime, uh, Francis, Eric, or Bruce, you guys are seeing questions. And maybe you can, we can do some Q&A while other people are counting. So yes, don't type your answer yet. Just count. And uh, we're going to ask for your answer in about three minutes. Noah would like to know, um, how long does the battery on Perseverance last? That's a, that's a good question. Um, right now, I, I'm going to say, I think it's, 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 it's going to, well, the, the thing is, is, is it'll eventually get less and less um, capacity, right, over time. But um, it, it'll probably hit, it'll probably get to the, you know, probably 20 year mark is the way typically we design stuff so, so that it lasts kind of for a long time. Um, but the battery will eventually get to a point where, where it, it will just lose its capacity, right? But, um, but we have a, a, a source and, you know, that, that back here on the RTG that we will be using to try to keep it charged. So we, we really do manage the batteries uh, pretty closely. And the other thing that helps is that it's really cold on Mars and that actually helps out the batteries for, for mm. their life. Further about batteries and, and, and energy, uh, SIDAC would like to know um, if they, they would use solar panels or conventional batteries and what are like the pros and the cons of using those types? So we don't have, so as I mentioned, right, we don't have solar panels on, on this rover. We actually use this radio, what they call the RTG, which is a, 
radioisotope thermoelectric generator. So this is a, a decaying piece of uh, nuclear material is inside. And as it decays, it gets really, really hot. And that heat, that heat that is generated inside is then used, it, that heat is, is converted from thermal energy to electrical energy as it starts to cool down, as it goes through a, a particular material that we've you know, designed inside there, right? And during that process of cooling down, it generates a small electrical current. And we have hundreds of these in here, and then we tie them all to the battery. So we're constantly charging the battery. Um, and basically, we're, I think it sits at about 110 watts. Um, most of your toaster ovens, or toasters are, are, are higher power than that, right? So 110 watts is not a whole lot of power, but that's what we use to actually do that. Now, solar panels can do the same thing. However, we're on a dusty Martian environment. You gotta worry about dust and, and or if you're flying far away from the sun, then you need really, really big panels to actually capture enough energy to, to, to keep going, right? So. It all depends on, on where you're going and what your mission is doing that determines what kind of power source you'll need. Okay, great. Um, Nietzsche was, I think, referring back to an earlier part of your presentation when you said that they might be landing the samples in Utah. Um, mm -hmm. where, where is Utah and why is that like a good place to, to be bringing the sa samples back so, to? So Utah, Utah is, is in... Uh, is in uh, the United States. It's it's about and and the reason why this particular area is uh, there's a from what I understand a a a desert there. There's a large desert that in Utah, and the sand is really soft. And so what they're looking at is saying, hey, if we're gonna throw you know kind of drop this thing on Earth, we don't want to put it in water like in the ocean because that could actually have a, a, you know, that could actually contaminate, right? You know, water gets everywhere. That can actually contaminate or, or make the, the samples not viable. Um, and, and, the other, and, and so the sand is better, right? And they, they, they believe that they have this sand that, and we understand the sand composition that we think, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll design it to, to, to survive that impact. Okay, awesome. Um, are we ready to uh, look at some of our answers for the- Yeah, so let's look at some of the answers. So so uh, how about this? Um, I can start showing you and counting them and that way you guys can see- uh, Sorry, I think I unshared it. Can you share again? Yeah, no problem. All right, so you guys can see that again, cool. So I mentioned we have six wheels. So there's definitely at least six actuators, right? Six motors. So there's one here, two, three. On the other side, one, two, three, so that's six. But then we gotta be able to turn. So we actually have motors up here. One, two, three, four. So we actually, we use 10 motors to drive the Rover. And these allow us to turn make turns where we can turn the, the front wheels and the back wheels can turn and we can make a turn to the right, we can turn to the left. Um, we can also do a turn in place where we turn the wheels and you know, uh, turn them around and, and we can actually kind of spin sort of about the center, right? So we can actually spin kind of like, kind of like that, right? You know, uh, just kind of spin around um, if we need to, right? So, um, so anyway, so that there's 10 motors there. Um, there's actually, uh, as I mentioned, there's five motors here. Um, there's another five motors in this drill. There's another uh, seven motors down here in the, in the sample handling system. There's another motor down here. In total, there's about, uh, there's about 36 motors in total that make up this entire rover. So there's a lot of little motors that, that are being used to, to, to kind of get us, get us doing our, our job. Amazing, amazing. Um, a, a question came through that um, it's very interesting. It kind of, speaking of the history of rovers, how did, how did you get the rovers to Mars? Like maybe like talking about the landing part of that. Yeah, so we've, uh, we've done a, a few different landing approaches, right? One, um, 
way back when, when I was actually, I think even before I was born, we had landed Voyager. And Voyager was a, uh, uh, a mission that landed on Mars and, and it, it, it basically had uh, jet or you know, rocket engines that were on all the way down to it, it touched down. Now, Voyager was a, a, a lander. It wasn't a rover, so it didn't move. Um, we then, when we started launching rovers and Sojourner being the first one, uh, followed by uh, Spirit and Opportunity and then uh, Curiosity. Well, sorry, Spirit and so, so Sojourner and then Spirit and Opportunity. Those were both um, landed with uh, essentially airbags or balloons around it. So they had a lander and, and they, they actually had big airbags and we would bounce the rover inside these airbags on the surface of Mars. And eventually when it stopped bouncing and just sat there, we would deflate the bags or the, deflate the balloons, open the landing pedals and the rover can drive out. Now, that technology was something we wanted to keep doing, but then we built, um, you know, then came uh, Curiosity, which is about the same size as this rover, and Perseverance, which is this rover. They became too big to land that way on Mars. They, the, the, the airbags, the balloons wouldn't actually, they would pop when we, when we would try to land it that way. So we, they came up with uh, what we call the Sky Crane, where we used a, a uh, again, uh, 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 rocket engines to 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 slow the rover down, and then and then uh, use like basically a, 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 a crane winch to to lower the rover to the ground, and then and then drop the rover off safely on on the surface of Mars, right? So um, so yeah, so that's so that those are the that's kind of the evolution, and and then we've landed other. Uh, like insight uh, is it, and you know polar lander. Those were, were going to be uh, landers that that land directly on you know touching down, similar to Voyager. Awesome. Th let's do a little pop quiz based on what you've taught us so far. Okay, with the with the 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 diagram or the three D model. Where was the Mars helicopter stored on the rover? Can you can write it in the chat. Of course, before it started flying around, where did they put the, the helicopter on the rover? Well, guys are typing. Um, we're going to try to open up the chat um, for not the chat, the like, uh, sorry, hold on one second. I actually did this wrong. Um, you guys need to unmute yourself. I'm going to lower everyone's hand and I'm going to have people raise their hand to ask some questions um, in a minute. And, uh, and also, I know people have been sending questions to Francis as well. I want to make sure some of those get answered too. Maybe, Francis, you can ask a couple of those questions and then we're going to go to those people who raise their hand um, and have you go do voice, ask some questions. Go ahead, Francis, you want to go yeah, first? So one of the and, questions that I got was, how long does it take to like build a rover, I guess? Okay, uh, sorry, Eric, I incidentally muted everyone. So can you ah, unmute yourself? No, I got, oh. I got it now, thanks, yeah, I see that. So um, yeah, Francis, so that's, it, it depends, right? The, uh, typically it could take about 10 years to design a rover from, from essentially paper all the way up. Now, um, now if we already have a good design and we want to reuse part of it, we can probably do it in a little bit shorter time. So maybe five, six years. Okay, yeah. Um, another question that I got was that, I guess, this is like kind of more abstract, but in terms of like space missions, is NASA like more focusing on stuff in our solar system or stuff like more farther than that? And well, we actually we actually do a lot in our own solar system, and and then um, for sure we we try to always make sure we understand what's you know around Earth first, right? And then we do also do exploration outside. But um, but yeah, we 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 do now Earth all the way out, and then we actually, we even do some experiments that are uh, you know ground based, right? That 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 are um, you know we don't have to take a launch vehicle. We just we we can do them um, on Earth. Uh, I'll, I'll give an example, right? We, uh, we created a, uh, a sensor that, that can detect um, human hearts 
uh, beating in in disaster zones, right? So uh, during Nepal, there was a, a a large earthquake, and there was rubble and people trapped, and and we actually deployed our sensor, and it was able to tell us when there was uh, heartbeats there to to detect heartbeats, so that we can tell rescue workers where to go look for people and and hopefully save some lives. So, so yeah, we 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 try to we try to do a little bit of everything, right? From uh, you know stuff on Earth and all the way out to to deep deep space. Very cool. Um, and I think, Bruce, you had your pop quiz. Are people ready to answer the quiz in the chat? We've got a few uh, coming through. Some are coming directly to me. Um, the helicopter is under the rover. And another one, I'm pretty sure it was on the top. So if we think back to the rover, where anyone else want to say where they thought that it was stored? Right under the right under the roof, um, top under the belly, under the rover. That seems to be the consensus. Which one is right, Eric? Yeah, it's under the rover, right? Exactly. So it, it was tucked underneath the rover, and then it was dropped off uh, once we got on Mars. Great. We have 20 people raise their hand to ask questions. We're gonna to try to do maybe five. Bruce or Francis or Eric, you guys wanna go unmute people to, um, if you don't know how to do it, I can do it, but you can unmute and then call their name. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll defer to Francis to go ahead and pick the people. Yeah, go for it, Francis. Uh, do I just like choose someone? <laughs> yeah, you go to, when you choose someone, you need to unmute them first. Okay, I guess first Lillian. Okay, so um, how many rovers have there been? So there are five rovers on Mars that, that are currently, uh, well, that not, they're not all still operational, but, but they, are, they have, we have put five rovers on Mars. That was a good question. Should we do another one like that? Yeah. Um, Bruce, you want to pick one? Okay, let's, uh, let's, let's talk to Jimmy. So um, when I studied that picture of the rover, I saw a thing on the top that sticks out. Is it a camera or what is it? Yeah, so, so the, the thing on top of the rover is, it's called the mast. And that, that is, uh, it has a bunch of cameras on there, both science cameras, navigation cameras, uh, a weather station, a laser, and yeah, but it, yeah, it, it, it has, uh, there are cameras on there too. Absolutely. Okay. All awesome. right. Do we have time for a couple more like this? Uh, sure. Okay, awesome. Let's talk to um, um, Adrian here. Go ahead, Adrian. When will, when will you make cities on Mars? Sorry, can you say that one more time? We have just a, a bit of echo there. When will you make cities on Mars? When will we make something? I, I'm trying to catch the last part. Something on Mars. When will we make? When will you make cities on Mars? Ah, cities on Mars. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, that is going to be a long time away as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> uh, it's going to take us a long time to actually be able to, um, I think, get people on Mars, uh, right? It, it's, it's, uh, it's not an easy task. Um, you know, we, we can only, at least for the technology that I am aware of, um, we can only land about 2,000 pounds at a time on Mars and... and uh, cities, buildings, things like that take a lot more weight than that to, to, to be successful. Okay, well, thank, thanks for the question. Let's uh, hear from Kush. Go ahead, Kush. Um, so I have two questions. My first one was how much ra radioactive material do you use for the fuel of a rover? That's a good question. Um, it is not very much, but I, I, I actually do not have that answer in, in my 
in my head. Um, I, I, I can probably go look it up, but, but um, it, it, it doesn't require a whole lot. Um, it, it just gets really hot and we're, we're more using the heat out of it, not, not necessarily the material itself. Okay. And my second question was, is there like any evidence of um, extraterrestrial life on Mars? Not that we've seen. So, uh, you know, we're looking for, we are, we are looking for signatures uh, of life, right? And so that's kind of what we're looking to do. We're trying to get a sample and, and hopefully when it comes back, we can measure and, and determine if there was ever life there uh, on, on Mars. Okay, thanks very much, Kush, great uh, questions. Let's hear from Erica. Go ahead, Erica. I was wondering, do you use like special metal or like a, like a like normal metal to make your robots, like your rover? Yeah, it's a good point. Um, so we don't, nothing, I'm gonna say it's nothing necessarily special or exotic that we wouldn't have on earth that, that we that might not be used in everyday everyday life. It's just that we typically try to use things that are, are really light in weight, but very strong. And so, so depending on, on, on the application, we'll pick different metals, but we use aluminum, we use titanium. You know, those are, those are pretty average metals that you're gonna find on earth. Okay, awesome. And uh, let's hear from Masahuru. It's Masaharu. Ah, sorry, Masaharu. Uh, what mission do J JPO has are currently trying to do and do like, uh, yeah. Yeah. So we have we have a mission that we're building a spacecraft to go to Europa, um, to to study the the the, the Jovian moon Europa. Um, we are starting to work on on the Mars sample return. Um, and, and that, that's, that's just getting started. Um, we have another mission that is, is, is nearly done. That's going to go to, uh, Psyche, which is a, uh, asteroid, a metal asteroid in the asteroid belt. And, and the thought there is, is there's a, uh, um, the asteroid belt we think should be a planet, not, not a debris field. And so the, this metal asteroid they think is actually a, a, a core that is that has gotten frozen when something happened to we, we think maybe a planet while, while it was forming may have got hit with something else and 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 broke apart so so they want to go study that so those are some of the those are some of the projects that that are currently in work now awesome um i guess next maybe august Hi, I'm going to start with August. He's um, just coming back. So the question that we had, we had like about three of them, but the main one was what, uh, how deep do you have to go in order to get your samples uh, from the rover? Oh, okay, yeah. Let him answer that first. Yeah, the core, the core samples are, are on the order of about uh, two and a half to three inches is, is what we're taking out. Oh, okay. And the good. second one is how strong is the rover? How strong is the rover? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's pretty strong. Um, the rover uh, with one arm has to hold about 100 pounds or 45 kilograms. Uh, and it, it, can stretch, it can stretch its arm out and, and, and touch the ground and, and, and you know, with, with pretty good accuracy. So... I think it's pretty strong. It, it can hold 100 pounds with one arm. Awesome. One last question he has is, uh, how do you bring back the samples to Earth, and how long does it take? So, so we're, we're just starting to work on that, and, um, but, but our, our plan is that it'll probably be uh, about 10 years from now when, when we get them back. We're, gonna we're designing a spacecraft today. We're just starting to work on that. We're gonna we're gonna have to build the spacecraft, launch it, land on Mars, go collect the samples that are already go select the tubes that have already have samples inside. We have to load them into a a uh, what we call the OS and a uh, 
a Mars Ascent vehicle. And then we will launch that back in, you know, that'll launch back to, to a Martian orbit. And then another space path will pick up those samples and bring them back. And so all of that adds up to about 10 years or so. Great. Humayl is really, really yeah. itching to ask a question. All right. <laughs> so, Humayl, there you go. Here's your chance. Uh, I have two questions. The first one is, uh, what planet are you got, uh, trying to go to next? Uh, the one I'm working on is Mars. Uh, that, that's where we're going to next. And another question when will you like find out uh, how to grow like plants on um, Mars? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I, I actually don't know. Uh, most of the work that we do is robotic and we don't do a lot of human kind of stuff. So, so I don't even know if there's a project out there that's already st starting to study that. The, 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 the thing is we do know a lot about Mars and know what the, atmosphere is like we know what the temperatures are um we know um you know there's no there's no flowing water right there things like that so we we can we can create that on earth if, if we wanted to and 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 try to look at what it does to plant we also know the radiation what kind of radiation it's is seen on mars so um so i think we can probably do that here i just don't know when that might happen when we might try to do that you know at, at mars Good question. 